we have come back in the lab and we've got these alginate impressions that we took for the pickup for our precision partials. And I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to do this. We did th three different techniques on using transfer base, we did a pickup, and then we did a pickup that we're gonna do an immediate um, reline in the final partial. But what we've gotta do now is, while this alginate is undistorted, we need to go ahead and pour these up. Now, if you remember in dental school, they made us make what was known as Duralay dyes. Duralay dyes, where we would lubricate the inside of the crown, put Duralay in there, put a little dowel pin in there, and then uh, pour a stone cast on it. Then you'd have a hybrid model of crowns and stone. That worked great for years and years. There's some other ways to do it, and one of the problems with Duralay is when you put it into a crown or a bridge that has a porcelain butt joint margin, then when you try to get it off, and many times you'll break your porcelain margin. So there again, I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways to do this. You need to work it out with your laboratory technicians the best way that it works for you and your systems. Now, on Mr. Mahone, since we have a gracious plenty of metal margins, we've got metal uh, lingual collars, we've got that, um, bar. We don't have any porcelain margins on Mr. Mahone, so I'm going to show you how to use triad gel instead of Duralay. We call these triad gel dies. For each unit, you need to get you some little dowel pins. The lab technicians can get these for you. And then get a pair of three, three prong pliers or a pair of pliers and just bend them. And then here's Mr. Mahone's impression that we made in a custom tray and his little crowns are down in there and his bars on this side. We don't have to lubricate the inside of the crowns. They're actually a little bit wet. This is triad gel. And I'm just gonna inject some into each one of the crown and bridge units. And with a bar, I'll actually put a little bit of triad gel under the bar. And the reason I do that is so that the bar has a little stop in triad gel so that it won't erode away while the uh, laboratory is fabricating the partial. Then I'll take my little bent dial pins. The reason they're bent is because I don't want them to come out of the stone. And using the short side, I'll just push them down into the triad gel. If you don't have any dowel pins, you can use an old paper clip or something, but most of the time the lab, if you're doing something like this, can get you some dowel pins and you can keep them in the office. And then with the triad gel in, all you gotta do is put your handheld curing light on the gel and it sets it pretty quickly. Triad gel being clear, get a good depth of cure. You don't need to put this in a triad oven. The oven gets so hot that it will distort the alginate impression material pretty severely, really dry it out badly. Now we're solid. Our pins are secure into the abutment teeth, and there's a little bit of triad gel under the bar. Now all we've got to do is rewrap this up. We'll take it over to the model, model uh, department, shall we say, uh, and we'll pour that, and we will pour this in dye stone. I use dye king blue. Okay, that's got Mr. Mahone's impression, and we have two impressions on Beverly to do. And uh, we're gonna do hers a little differently. Remember, we have our transfer base that's relined with rubber base. Her crown and bridge is down in there and she has 360 degree porcelain margins. Now, it would be ill-advised to put GC pattern resin or Duralay or Triad gel down in those. And the reason I can tell you that is because we've done it. And what happens is those porcelain margins, when you try to get it off that gel dye are just going to break. 
Well, now you've got a whole case made. The partial, the crown and bridge, everything fits, and you've broken all the margins off. So one of the things that uh, Terry Foey and the guys at Newcraft, we've worked out over the years, is these epoxy dies that come back with the case that were uh, in this Geller model, I can actually super glue those down into the crown and bridge units, and then they'll have an epoxy die that's part of their hybrid model. And we don't have to worry about the porcelain margins fracturing in the long run. It still could happen, but the, the likelihood is not there. The problem is, if I stick this, this die down in there, what's going to hold it? It's going to kind of flop around on me. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the tiniest little bit of super glue to hold this in place. Here's the dies, and we've numbered them. I just use a little alcohol marker and number so I get the right die in the right hole. That's always a good thing. And, uh, and so this is number 11. And so I can figure I'll take these little doohickeys right here. We inject a little crazy glue because we're a little crazy around here. Put a little crazy glue in this well from the composite kit. And using these little bonding agent sticks, we'll just pick a little bit of super glue up and put it right on the tip of the crown prep, kind of the incisal edge, if you will. We'll take it, making sure that I got number 11, and then I'll push it down into the die and I'll hold it for just a second. What this is going to ensure is that our um, little epoxy die is not going to float out of there when we start pouring this up. Okay, that's one down. Have to hold it pretty good. And don't put a lot of super glue. Don't, don't just glob it on there because it's just too hard to get it back out when they get it to the lab. Okay. Now let's do number nine. Put a little bit on the incisal edge. You can, if you want to, put it down into the crown and bridge abutment. I'm just going to hold it right to place. Now what I'm going to do is after I've got these in and they're super glued down, I'm going to go back and I'm going to put a little bead of the sticky wax around them. Let's do number eight. Number eight I'll do by putting it down in the unit of crown and bridge, just down into the incisor wedge. Any way you want to do it. And then we'll do number six the same way. You want to kind of dry out the inside of those crown and bridge units before you do this. Because it's really important that these things are stable when you're pouring it. Otherwise, you just won't have a good model at all. Okay. So what I've got is I've got the epoxy dies from the Geller model super glued into the crown and bridge. Now we pour a stone cast into that and we'll have a hybrid model that even if they have to repair a porcelain margin or something, they still have the ability to do that. But it's really got them protected quite well. Now, remember on her lower, we did a pickup and I've already cemented the epoxy dyes in those. Now your lab may not make epoxy dyes. If your lab doesn't make epoxy dyes and you want to use the triad gel, you must, before you put the gel in, go in with some wax, an electric waxer or a Bunsen burner, and cover all the porcelain before you put the triad gel in. Otherwise your porcelain is going to break against the stone. That's kind of the way we used to do it, is we'd block out all the porcelain, just like you would if you were going to solder. Block out all the porcelain with wax, then put your triad gel in. Some labs don't make epoxy dyes, and so that would help you out. But as you can see, those fit right back down in there pretty good. Now we can pour this, and uh, it will serve as a great hybrid model. Now, 
When we pour these, we will use die stone to pour them. We want the teeth that the partial framework is going to be made on to, to be really an excellent replica of those teeth, like Mr. Mahone's lower interiors. We need that lingual surface to be an excellent replica, and they need to be able to wax to that. And so my personal preference is to use some, some die stone. And I would use die king blue is what I use. Um, whatever die stone that you work with, I would recommend, but the, you need something that's going to make it through the process of waxing the partial framework and then finishing and polishing the partial framework and then the ability to be able to process acrylic to that because what we're going to get back is we're going to get back the finished product. We're going to get the crown and bridge and the precision partials. So I'm going to turn this over to the technician and Kathy and Terry are going to pour these models up for us in die king blue. Our next appointment then will be to insert the crown and bridge and the precision partials. And on Beverly's lower, we will do an immediate reline into her final partial. We'll also discuss some things like grind in, remount models, and the quality control necessary to make what really would be a full mouth reconstruction out of fixed and removable prosthetics. Done.